Hello, everyone. Have you ever wanted to be a wizard? Well, in order for you to be a wizard, you have to know how to prepare and cast your spells. If that's something you want to learn, then I have the perfect game for you, because today on Joker Reviews, we're going to be reviewing Arcana Rising. Roll up the sleeves of your cloak and get ready to cast some spells in this magical engine building game. You are an aspiring mage acquiring and casting spells at the best time for some big effects. Arcana Rising is a fun game about casting and preparing spells. You're going to be playing a apprentice mage and just trying to make sure that you're preparing and casting your spells at the right time. What do I mean by that? Well, on your turn, you're going to have the ability to either cast or prepare spells, but not both. So you have to make sure that you're doing it at the correct time to get you the most benefit. The game is going to be played over three rounds, indicated by the backs of these cards here. So, when you start the game off, you're going to deal out six cards to each player. So six here, and six here. The other cards are not going to get used. What you're going to do is you're going to take a look at your hand, and you're going to pick which one of these cards you would like to either prepare by paying its cost here, or cast by discarding and then casting on the active spell types on the moon board. Let's get into a little bit more detail on preparing spells. So, we take a look at the cards that we can have to choose from here, and let's go with this herb card here. So, if we look at this herb card, there are actually two different costs associated with this card. So, one, you can play either one blood specifically, or one of any type of resource. In the first round, you're gonna see most of the cards are going to be like this, where it's one and one, or it's two and two, where there's not much of a difference between the costs. But as we look further in the game, you're gonna see things like this one, two potion resources or four of any resources. So the specific cost is t going to be better in most cases than the more generic cost. So looking at this herb card, we're going to pay our blood right here, and we do often want to get rid of blood because blood is worth negative victory points at the end of the game, but it can also be used for helpful effects. If we look at this, we're going to put it back into our source pile here, and we're going to take this herb card, and because we've prepared it, we're now going to slide it underneath our board. We're going to slide this up just to make sure everybody can see. We're going to slide it under our board, and now it's going to be placed into our tableau. What we are going to do next is we're going to take our remaining cards after we've either cast or prepared one, and we're going to pass it to the other player. The other player will have done the same. So say they purchased a card that requires them to pay one charm. So they also took an herb card, and they're going to put it in their tableau. And they paid their one charm resource it's going to go back into the stock there and they will pass the hand to the other player that is now the first turn we're going to take these tiles off of the moon board and we're going to place them back in the bag we are then going to move on to the second turn of this round now let's discuss casting your second option that you're able to do on your turn is you're able to take one of the cards that's in your hand and you're able to discard it face down off to the side and you are able to now cast in the disciplines that are shown on the moon board so in this case we can cast charm and we can cast herb we're always going to start with the leftmost eligible discipline so in this case we're going to cast charm first so that means we're going to gain one charm because of our starter ability here and then we're going to go over to this one. We're going to start top to bottom. So we're going to gain one herb, take our little resource marker and put it there. And then we're going to go down to here, which is exponential growth. Add a token to this card and then gain one herb per token on this card. So we're going to add one here. And then we're going to gain an herb because we now have a token on this card. This does not count as a resource though. This is just a marker in this case. If we go over to our opponent over here, 
They're also going to gain one charm, which replaces the one that they paid before. They're going to gain one herb, and they're also going to gain another herb because of this ability. The interesting thing about this ability, and indicated by the little moon symbol here, is this one's actually going to activate every time that a person casts, even if it's not herb in the moon board here. So now that we've cast, we're going to take these off, and they're going to go into the bag. In order for the opponent to have cast, they would have also had to discard a card. So they would have discarded a card off to the side, and then the pile will pass from player to player until the round is over. These moon tokens will come off two at a time as the different turns count down. When we get to turn number one here, which would be the last turn of a given round, we're now going to actually activate all of the disciplines on here with the bottom most spell. So in the case of this, we haven't really been doing anything going back and forth and taking cards. But in this case, the bottom most on the herb would be this spell right here. The bottom most on all of these would be the starter ability. So you're going to actually activate them left to right. Starter ability, card, starter, starter, starter here as you go down the list from left to right. You're going to continue passing the cards back and forth until all of them have either been discarded for casting or they have been added to the tableau. Once that happens, you're going to deal out another six cards to each player, but this time from the round two stack, they'll get dealt out to each player and you will repeat the process. But first, you wanna make sure that you are placing out those moon tokens so you can keep the game organized and let you know which disciplines you're able to cast on each turn. One thing I do want to point out is some of these components were Kickstarter components, but you are able to get them on Gray Fox. These would typically be replaced with these resource tokens here. And instead of the abacus here, to mark your victory points, you would have these little tokens here. After three rounds, you count up all the victory points and you see who's the best mage in town. Now that you know how to play the game, I'm gonna meet you back up top and I'll give you my final thoughts on the game. Now that you know how to play the game, I'm gonna kind of give you my thoughts now. I like Arcana Rising because it's a very simple game to teach people and it plays quickly and simply and has enough variety to it where you can kind of get your own little engine going. And I really like engine building games. I enjoy a lot of the interactions with a lot of the spells and how figuring out when you're going to be casting them is really important to the game. I like that aspect of it. I like the fact that there are a varied amount of spells that you can do. And you can go into this game with different strategies each time and kind of do different things and still have an effective technique on how to win the game. It works really well with two players, but it scales all the way up to the four. And I think it also works very well at any of the in-between kind of settings there. So if you're, you're playing with two players, it works really well. Playing with three players, it works. And four players, it works really well. There's even a solo variant that's in the rule book that allows you to kind of play by yourself without any other player. So if you have no friends on a particular day, not if you, not that you don't have friends normally, but if you don't have friends on a particular day and you want to play Arcana Rising, you can certainly play the solo variant, and I really like that. The artwork is a little generic, which is kind of a drawback for me, but the components are really nice, and the colors are nice. They're bright, vibrant, and it adds to the whole kind of ambiance of the game. I like that I can explain this game to somebody in about five minutes and we can play it over the course of around a half hour or so. The box says 30 to 60 minutes. It does start to look at the 40, 45 minutes, sometimes 50 minute range when you're playing with four players, but it still is a really fun experience and I don't ever feel like the game is really dragging. I certainly would recommend this game if you want a fun, easy to learn, easy to teach thematic game 
that has some interesting mechanics to it, especially if you like that drafting kind of thing and the blind drawing of the different spell disciplines. I'd recommend you pick up this game. It's certainly something that is competitive with the other games that are similar to it on the market. If you like what you saw here today, please hit that like button. Let us know that you really like these reviews and these explanations of mechanics and all the Let's Plays and things that we're doing going forward. Board games are a passion of ours, and we want to make sure you're enjoying the content that we're putting out there. Leave a comment down below. What was the last game that you got off Kickstarter? Because this game was a Kickstarter-backed item. I certainly loved the extra components that came with it, the extra pieces that were available on Kickstarter. I always like getting those upgraded components. What was your favorite component that you've gotten from a recent Kickstarter game? Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of these deep dives on games, mechanic explanations, or reviews going forward. And ring that bell so you know what's up, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye, everyone.